good afternoon, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. And let me know if you can see the slide. How's everybody doing today? Rainy, cold day in New York. <laughs> I actually feel like putting the heat on for the first time. I'm like, I might put the heat on before I go to bed tonight. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. So we had a great day today. We shorted. For those of you that don't know, I like to focus on shorting stocks. The market fell today. We shorted Facebook in the live training room today. It was just all around a fabulous day. Fabulous day. So it's a good day to be here. It's a good day to learn a little bit from me. If you are not familiar with what I do, you can go to my website. It's www.thestockswish.com. And again, if you would like a trial of the trading room this week, feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. And um, I can send you a trial for the week. It's raining where you are, Angelo, too? Yep. Yeah. Cold. So let's talk about how you can earn up to $20,000 a month or even more, because it really depends on how much you're risking. I mean, there are people that have been with me for quite a number of years that are making more than this per month. And again, I've been trading since, well, since 2008, but it took me about three years to figure out my system. So till I really pulled everything together, it was like 2011 till I was really, really good at what I did. And then uh, now I've been doing this, gosh, for 13 years, going on 14. So I do love trading and particularly, again, days like today are just so fun to trade when you're doing everything and everything works. But we're also going to talk about trading in this period of inflation. Right now we're in high inflation. Okay, I've been talking about this a lot on the TV. For those of you that don't know, I speak on national television. Um, I was on Fox News Friday uh, with Neil Cavuto, whose show is going on right now, actually, and we were talking about the economy. We were talking about what's happening. It's not just the fact that they are working on this 3.5 trillion stimulus plan, which is an outrageous number. 3.5 trillion is just a crazy number. It's also the debt ceiling is coming up. They extended it to October 18th, but they haven't come to any conclusions on that yet. And the reality is that there's just too many things that are coming to a head right now. Supply chains are having an issues and interest rates are going up and you're seeing selling in the market. Okay, so if you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can feel free to call me at 929 gap You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, if you'd like a trial to the room this week, you can feel free to call me as well. So for those of you that don't know, again, I live in New York. I live in Manhattan. So I never go to the grocery store ever. I didn't before COVID, and now since COVID, I never do. Um, or I rarely did before COVID, but now I absolutely never do. Anyway, so I always put items in my cart when I need stuff, even though I might not order that day. Every single day I get up, if I think of something that I need, I stick it in the cart and I'm always getting these messages. And I put this in here just so you can see. Every time now, like if I, if I would place an order today, it would be whatever it costs. But like if I just stuck a couple things today, I may not need an all order today. But by the end of the week, then I go to place the order for my groceries. Everything's up. It's just up, up, up. Could be a dollar here, could be $2 there, could be whatever. I mean, I've noticed some things that have gone, like these breakfast sausages I like to eat, they've gone from $2.99 to $5.99, literally in the last month. So that's not even, they're saying that the cost of inflation, the rise of inflation, it has been like around 5% or something. It's, to be honest with you, it depends what product you're looking at, it's way more than that. So regardless of where you live in the world, and particularly we're talking about the United States right now, things have gone up. Cost of food has gone up. Now, I don't drive, but I know gas has gone up. So we're living in a time where it's an inflationary period and it's not stopping. It's not stopping. And what I'm noticing is getting worse. Now, what is one of the reasons it's getting worse? Well, here's another item I like to eat. I love these cheese balls. They're sold out. They're out of stock. Why? Not because they're not making cheese balls, because they can't get them to the store. The trucks aren't coming into New York. They can't get the products into the city. Truck drivers are still in unemployment. And actually, a friend of mine works for a big trucking uh, company in, 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 uh, in the United States. She told me they're having all kinds of problems. One, they, they have had people that have just quit. Okay, they don't want to work during COVID, and obviously it's a job with long hours. And two, uh, now that 
marijuana is legal, people are not passing drug tests. When you are a truck driver, you have to pass these drug tests. I guess they test every week for the CDL licensing and uh, people are smoking pot. And while it may be legal in many places, you still have to pass the drug test to, to drive. So then they can't drive for six weeks if they don't pass the test. And so people are going on unemployment who are failing the test. And then she said, we're having trouble then getting them back after they go on unemployment when they fail the drug test. So there's so many things that are going on right now. And again, it's not that farmers aren't farming food. It's not that they're not milking the cows. All of these places are producing they may not be producing as much as before because they're down employees too, but it's a big problem with truck drivers. And then of course, I'm sure you've heard this on the news uh, right here in New York. Uh, now that's not near me, it's all the way downtown in the financial district. They have ships backed up in the ports because they have to go through the COVID checks. They have to go through COVID uh, procedures to be able to unload all the goods from the docks. So between that the uh, lack of people that are working, you're not, you can't get stuff that you normally like to eat. You can't get stuff you normally like to buy. And I don't see when this is ever going to change, to be honest with you, in the near future. And especially since we're getting into the holiday season. And I mean, they're even telling people in the news now to, to buy their Christmas gifts now, which is really crazy when you think about it. Uh, but Columbus Day is coming up a week from today, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of good sales. So I'm just thinking about ordering my gifts next week for October. It's crazy because I want to make sure and get presents for people. We're in a situation where the world is just so strange right now. So what are we left to do? And that's what we're going to talk about today. There was an economic uh, report that just came out last week. Some 79% of U.S. consumers said they're concerned about rising prices on essential goods and services such as housing and food, which both have gone up. According to a monthly survey of more than 1,000 U.S. adults conducted by Numerator, a market research firm, Americans paid 2.8 and 3% more for shelter and food, and actually, I think it's more than that, to be honest with you, consumed at home, respectively, in August compared to August 2020, according to CPI data. And that's broad-based, and that's why, obviously, it may be different depending on where you live. Prices may be higher than 2 to 3%. And everyone knows since COVID, people are buying homes like crazy, and it's very difficult to get stuff like furniture, um, and it's taking months, months to get furniture if you order furniture. I mean, just normal things that you go to buy to fix up your home or do stuff is costing more. I found this little inflation calculator. It put in, if you if you bought something for a dollar, and this is really funny, uh, this is a long time ago though, 1913. So we're talking almost, well, no, it would be more than 100 years ago. Actually, I'm not sure why I put that number in or if it just plopped up. Look. 2,663%, <laughs> can you believe it? So when you think about it and you're like, oh my God, but when you put your money in a bank, you're earning next to no interest. So it is really, really crazy. When you think about the interest that you would have earned if you had stuck money in the bank 100 years ago, you know, or even 50 years ago, or even 25 years ago, even with earning interest on the interest of the interest, it wouldn't be over 2,000%. So costs are going up and what are we going to do about it well first of all let's talk about what inflation is inflation is a rate of increases in prices over a given period of time inflation is typically a broad measure such as the overall increase in prices or the increase in the cost of living in a country which we're going on right now in the united states and again i realize some of you may be in different countries that come to me i have people that trade with me from all over the world you can trade the u.s market from anywhere which is nice um, but the fact is that in the United States, home prices have gone up. And it's strange because in New York, we had, we've had a terrible spell in New York with COVID. Um, prices probably have not gone up in New York as much as they have other places. It's still down in New York compared to pre-COVID, but they've gone up since last year. But there's places like I'm from Pennsylvania, and obviously anybody that's followed what's going on in Florida, people are flocking to Florida, flocking to Texas, flocking to a lot of these states where people are going back to normal, living their lives. And home prices have gone up astronomically. I, I was talking to a friend the other day, and we're like, where are all these people coming from? Why are all of a sudden people like, where are all these people coming from? I mean, you have all the rentals full, you've got the houses full. It's like, where is this you know, explosion, this population explosion, it feels like? Because where was everyone living before? You know, I don't know. I mean, it's really, really kind of interesting if you think about it, how this is all happening. 
So if we know and can accept the fact that, yes, we're in a period of inflation, everything's going up, just accept that fact or most things, okay? Well, what can you do? Well, you have two choices. One, you can spend less. So you can, things are gonna cost more. You can say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do without some things. So in other words, you can change your lifestyle. I'm not gonna get the cheese ball. I'm not gonna get the beefsteak tomatoes I normally get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull back and not buy things. For example, if your grocery bill is normally $200 a week, things have gone up, that means you'll get something less if you don't wanna spend more than your allotted $200 a week. And many, many people live in a budget. So, you know, that's one option. Now, I don't like that option personally. I, I'm, I'm the type of person I don't really live on necessarily a budget. If I wanna buy something, I buy it. That's just my personality. But I have noticed the cost of food going up just because, because of this silly Amazon cart. And what I started thinking about just recently, even myself is, you know what? Well, it's time to make more money. Now with trading, how do you make more money? You can either A, take more trades or increase your risk. So I've started to think about that for what I'm doing. Now, for those of you that are not trading, or if you are trading and you're not making money or you're not making enough or you're losing, which is the worst, you can make money in the market or doing something else. So your choice is to do without, or guess what? Make more money, earn more money, have more money coming in to cover the cost of the inflation, which you can do how? You can get a part-time job, you can ask for a raise at your current job, or you can learn how to trade and make money in the market. And I think that this is something that's nice because what I do does not take a lot of time on any given day. You can work your normal job and trade part-time. That's one of the things that makes trading so advantageous for people. Many people are not gonna get raises if they ask for it because businesses are hurting in this time frame. Businesses lay people off. You know the unemployment numbers have gone up. But the other thing is too, not everybody wants to do without. Like I said, I don't like doing without, and many people don't like that either. So you have to find a way to have more money coming in. That's the only way to go about it, okay? And any questions here, let me know. So what can you do? With inflation, this is a problem. Everyone is spending more, and this has nothing to do with how much money you have. This has nothing to do with that at all. There are people that are wealthy that are seeing costs of things go up and they're noticing it. Of course, they have more money to begin with, but people that have a lot of money still don't like to spend more for stuff. Do you understand? Whether it's a car, whether it's for a house, whatever. If you could have bought an apartment in New York, say in, in, you know, a year ago for 800,000, a one bedroom, and now this year it costs 1 million, and you knew that, you'd probably be annoyed, whether even if you were wealthy and had the money to do it, okay? So everyone notices inflation. But some people really can't afford the extra cost for the tomato. And that is where you're going to see changes in the economy. And that is where I'm saying the average everyday person can actually trade the market. And by average everyday person, I mean someone does not have to necessarily have a graduate degree, a bachelor's degree, a degree in finance, uh, experience of 10 years or five years or more under their belt having trading. You can learn how to trade from me in a weekend. While you may have a learning curve in order to do it, you still can learn and I can teach you because I've been doing this for a long time and I've been teaching people for a long time too. You do have to have money to trade in your own account. You open up an account with a broker and you do have to have money to take my class, but you put that on a credit card. That's the other thing that I've noticed in reference to what's going on People really haven't been talking about the fact that, you know, rates may be going up. Say you have money in a savings account. You say, well, I have this money and for a rainy day in a savings account. Okay. Well, every time I see this inflation and every time they talk about it and every week the Fed talks, you know what? I'm not seeing the savings rates go up. I'm not seeing them go up at all. It's really interesting how it always goes back to the fact that the banks win in the end. Because if you see interest rates going up on your credit card, they don't go up with your savings account. It never works out like that. It never, never does. So in the end, you're still going to have to find a way to have more money coming in. You get a second job or you start a business on the side. That's something you could do too. Or you ask for a raise if you can get it, but probably not, or you would have already gotten it by now. Or you learn how to trade and make money from the market. And while there's an initial investment, 
to take my class and pay for the class or open up a trading account, you can grow that trading account exponentially if you're doing well over time. And even in a short time, like by the end of the year, you can make money doing this, okay? And grow a small account into a much larger account. So any questions before we continue here from anybody? Everybody with me so far? So what do I do? Well, one of the things I do is day trade. Today we day traded Facebook. Facebook gap down, Facebook fell, I do gaps. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. But what really is the point of day trading? Well, the point is to make money. And the point is to make it quickly. And guess what? That's helpful too in an inflated economy because you have the money right now. You can make it, it's in your account today. You can take it out tomorrow, wire it out, transfer it out tomorrow, that's it. Boom, it's yours, it's there. You don't have to wait a week or two weeks or three weeks for a paycheck. That's convenient too. And again, people want money right now. What is the point of learning a trading system if you have learned one in the past? If you're someone that's traded in the past and you have failed, failed to make money, failed in the market, what's the point of learning anything at all? Well, I found that a lot of people, if they've paid for classes, have done classes, they kind of lose conviction that something's going to work or that anything's going to work. That's not true. There are just as many bad uh, trading educational places out there as there are bad traders. So of course there's a lot of them, but that doesn't mean that every educational place out there doesn't know what they're doing. Clearly I do. I've had the business staff for 10 years plus, and I've had a lot of people that have been with me for a long time that are making money that don't have to be with me and could go other places or could trade by themselves, and they're with me. Today is a good example of it because I've been calling Facebook short for quite some time. I've been doing it. I've been doing options in it, and then today it absolutely crashed and tanked. And you can say, well, it did because Facebook was down all day and it's still down. Yeah, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that last week or the week before that or the week before that. I knew that Facebook was lower and we've been shorting it. Why? Because I've been reading the chart. I've been reading the technicals. I've been reading the gap. And again, we're going to talk about that, what a gap is in a little bit. But the point of taking a trading class is to learn. It is to learn. And, and, and that means time. In, in order to move forward and get to the next step in life or overcome some of these obstacles like inflation, you have to take the time and the energy to, to learn something and to do it. Everybody wants to be where they want to be like yesterday. Everyone's impatient. And social media has contributed to that, quite frankly, and in, in a very negative way. But when you really buckle down and you decide, I want to do this and I'm committed to doing this, the sooner you start, the sooner you will move forward and before you know it, like that, because time literally goes so fast, so quickly, you will move ahead to achieving your goals. And you can get there, particularly if you have someone like me mentoring you. I take the time to talk to people. I emailed a few people today who I knew were new, you know, checking in with people. I occasionally do the check-in. You know, I'm very good with that with my students. And again, any questions, write them in the room, okay? Anyways, you need a foundation to trade. You need an infrastructure for every entry and, it, and it's a strategy. It's a strategy that I do. The strategy is the core reason behind why you're even watching that stock in the first place or even contemplating an entry or trade in it. An entry in a stock should not be taken unless the trade has a foundation supporting it, okay? So the foundation is what? The golden gap system. That is what if you came and took my class and learned from me, you would learn, okay? That is how I make my picks every day. That's how I made the pick for Facebook. So this is very important fact. Many stocks on any given day have no strategy to trade as a day trade. That is why on most days, stocks do not have a proper entry. There is no strategy, okay? And again, you can say, well, the market fell today, so every short worked. Yes, that's true. That's true. I'm not sure if anything rallied to a day, to be honest with you. Tesla was up in the morning. I'm not sure where it closed. We did not do Tesla long or short. But the fact is, today was what you would call a power trend day in the market. It fell all day. Sometimes it happens up. Sometimes it happens down. But it's very difficult to read the market. I don't get the market right all the time. I get it right a lot, but not all the time. We have to trade things that have nothing to do with the market or where you don't need the market. Because on any given day, most things will go with the market, and on most days, the market will not power trend in one direction or another. So the strategy that I do, the gap strategy I do, is the, is the secure foundation for the picks that I make every day for where I'm going to put my money. I'm going to put my money in this because it has high odds of working, and so on and so forth. What you don't want to do is crap shoots, throwing money around this place, that place, 
I mean, I, I know people that just, they'll do a long and something, a short and something the same exact day. That is crazy to me. That means they don't believe it's going to, they don't even know what it's going to do. Like, that's just a crapshoot. And what's the chances that you're going to even end up with any money at all? You're probably going to lose or make a little or be flat. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have that secure foundation. So for me, the foundation is a strategy on gaps. Gaps are a strategy or foundation for your trades in the market. When you choose to take a trade, there has to be a support system behind why you are taking the trade. Gaps are the support system or reason why you would enter a position. The reason you are choosing to enter a stock or the foundation for your entries should be because the stock is a quality gap. So a stock gap, so the opening price to debt, is different from the closing price of the previous day's trading. A gap is a break in the price action from one day to the next. Simple, okay? So that is what a gap is. Let's go over it. Is everybody with me here so far? Actually, let me, let me see if I can just go here to my chart here on um, the market. Since we're talking about the market, let's talk about the market here when I'm explaining what a gap is. Everybody see this trade of, not trade, but chart of the QQQs? Hello, is anybody there? Hello, am I talking to myself? Angelo, I know you're listening. Angelo, Angelo, you're an old timer and you have not done the class yet and I cannot believe it. And you were going to do the class in 2020 and you did it and I have no idea why. <laughs> Anyways, here is a gap. This closed here, 360.18. That was Friday. Today is Monday. This is Monday. Everybody with me? So we closed at 360.18 and we opened at 358.52. So what did we do? We gapped down. Boom. We sold off then. Low of the day today was huge. Big move down. $8 move down for the market. 350.32. Everybody see it? So this was a short. It also was a gap down. So in the morning, I predicted the market would fall. And I called puts in this market, and it worked. Now, what is a gap up? Let's go over here. Market closed here, gapped up. Rally. Okay, you could, could have gone long here. Now, can you go long every gap up? No. Can you short every gap down? No, you can't. You cannot. Over here, going back to last week, this was actually a gap up. It fell. You couldn't have gone long and it made any money. So you can't just always go in the direction of the gap. Many people don't understand that, but that's an important thing you have to understand as well. This day over here was a gap down. We closed here gap down and we rallied. If you shorted this here, you would have lost. So I developed a rating system to determine when this is going to actually go down and when this is actually going to go up. Do you follow me? Hello? Wow, this is either a quiet group or no one is paying attention to anything I'm saying. <laughs> I am talking to myself. Ronnie's there. Ronnie in Miami Beach. Okay. Let's go back to Adobe. Now, I did not call any trades in Adobe here today. I wished I, I wished I had, to be honest with you. But we did a trade in Adobe the other week. What happened to Adobe, it fell. So, Adobe closed here, gap down, dropped, and then fell. Boom. So, I called an option at Adobe. Well, it's kind of expensive. So you can use my system to do day trains, swing trains, or options, okay? Here was the options trade that was sent on the options newsletter, Wednesday, September 22nd, 9 a.m. 
I called the Adobe 620 puts that expired last week. They worked. These were not cheap, but to be honest with you, considering the price of the stock, they were cheap. One cost $10. So if you paid for one, you could have spent $1,000, sold at 40 and made three grand. This is a good trade. This is a 300% return on investment in one trade, okay? And I called this on the week before last week, actually, but the expiration date was last week and it fell last week. If you took an advanced risk, a beginner risk would be one contract, advanced risk eight contracts, risk 8,000, sold at 40, profit 24,000, return on investment 300%. So again, let's go back to this chart here. I called it on this day for the following week and then it fell, poof, drop, get the drop, okay? But it fell again today too, but that trade was last week. So again, how did I predict that Adobe would fall through 620, keep falling through 620, that was the strike, because I rated the gap using my system on the day that I called it, which was on the 22nd. Now the options newsletter is something that you can subscribe to separately. You don't have to take my class to do the options letter and be a subscriber. It's an annual subscription. I think it's very helpful though to take the class. And I think that every person that takes a class understands more what to do with the trains than people that have not taken the class. But it is not a requirement. It is a requirement to have taken my class to trade in the live room with me every day to do the day trades because those trades set up fast. And we will talk about some of those here too. But I'm showing you how you can predict the direction a stock is going to go or the market by reading the chart. It's the daily chart and rating the gap, which you would learn in my class. And if you can do that, you can make money because if you know something's gonna go up and you go long it before it goes up, you can make money. If you know something's gonna go down and you short it or sell it before it goes down, guess what? You can make money. Knowing what's gonna happen ahead of time, predicting it is very, very critical in order to make money. A lot of people don't understand how important that is. Getting the direction right is so important. It's the make or break it. It's the difference between winning or losing. It's a difference between winning or losing, okay? Everyone understand that? Okay, so in my class, I teach a checklist. That's how I make the picks. The system I use to find the right gap each day is a Golden Gap 26 point checklist. So I go through and I rate the gap. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? And like I did this morning with Facebook, I said Facebook's gonna fall today. We shorted it in the day trade room and I sent puts out for the options newsletter before the open. I knew it would fall and the market too. I don't predict that it's going to do something before it does it in the gap itself though. What do I mean? Well, let's go look here at the market tonight. Market right now is trading in the after hours here. It's 504 at what number? Take it up, look, 353.12-ish, give or take. I don't know where this market's going to open tomorrow, so I'm not predicting that. Do you follow me? I'm not predicting we're going to open up here or here or here or here or here or down here. I don't know. That's not what this is. I'm not predicting where it's going to get tomorrow. I get up in the morning, I see the gap, and then I read it, and then I predict it, and that's how we got the short today. Do you follow me? And that's the case with even stocks too. I'm specifically talking about the market here, but it could be the case for anything that I do, Adobe or whatever. I don't know what earnings are gonna come out and what people are gonna say on earnings in, in stocks, okay? That's not what I do. I wait until I see the gap, okay? Then I read it. Make sense? So, why would you come to me and learn the system? If you want to make money working 30 minutes a day, we trade in the morning, we were done less than 30 minutes with Facebook. If you want to day trade fast, you come to me. If you want to do options, you do the option, you put the trade in, put a sell order right after you take it if you don't want to watch it. If you want to watch it, you watch it for the targets. 
but it is a consistent way to make money trading gaps with big moves. And you need big moves, why? Because some trades I take lose. Not every trade I take works. So I've got to have one, more winners and losers, and I also have to have some big winners like the Adobe to cover the losers. And that's how you get ahead. That's how you get ahead, all right? And also we get a lot of trades. There's a lot of gaps in any one particular day. I mean, I don't even know how many things I did today. Again, today was a busy day, but you get a lot of gaps on any market condition. Earnings season, not earnings season. And I think the fall is gonna be a very busy time to trade, very. Any questions here so far? So what I do is look for the gap and I read it, okay? And getting back to what I was saying earlier when we started this conversation, what are you going to do if things are costing more? You can cut back, you can buy less things that you want. I find that that's bad for people mentally and emotionally and puts people like in a very negative space. You're better off, even if it costs money and time and hard work, and even if it doesn't happen the second, like today or tomorrow, even if it's gonna take you time to get there, to learn this, to do it, and everything else, you're gonna be much better off and feel much more financially secure and independent if you say, I'm not gonna let this thing set me back. You know, some things are out of our control. Interest rates are out of our control. Inflation is out of our control. Stuff that the decisions that the government is making is out of our control. My God, look at the last 19 months of our lives. So, and, and it's, again, it's about the risk. So how much do you need to risk? Well, you can risk $100 a trade, but then you would, wouldn't be looking to make 1,000 in every day it's one to one. So if you want to risk 500, you should be looking to risk 500. If you want to risk 1000, you should be looking to risk 1000. If you want to risk 200, you should be looking to risk 200 and so on and so forth. Okay. So you have to set your risk according to what the cash size of your account. If you have a $5,000 prop account, I would not be risking $2,500 a trade. I would be risking $1,000 a trade that's 20% of your account. I would be risking maybe 250, 300, 500 at the most, okay? Until you build it up to 10,000. If you wanna to go to a retail broker, you will need 25,000 minimum. And if you don't know the difference between that and if you have questions, you can ask me now. If you have questions about that, um, you know, again, I'm not a broker, but I can certainly refer you to places if you're interested. But you must have a live trading account to take the trains and you must have a charting system, a charting package, because you have to be able to see the gap and you need the daily chart. So here was a daily chart from the QQQs from today. Okay, let's take a look at it. Stock close to your gap down fell. Well, actually not today, I'm sorry, this was the 20th. Rallied, this was last Monday then, we fell hard, dropped, rallied Friday. Now this is today, Monday, October 4th, we fell. Okay, so you can see here this beautiful sell-off. So we shorted as a day trade Facebook today, but last week, it's the 28th, we shorted the market. So again, day trading means we're trading on margin. We're trading on margin, okay? So if I take a trade, depending on you know, where you have your account at a retail price or a pot place, you get 10 to one margin, you get four to one margin. Some places give more than 10 to one margin. So you don't have to have, if you're taking something like a thousand shares of something like the market or any stock, the exact cash equivalent. Does everyone understand margin or buying power? We shorted the market last week at 365.60. If you took a risk of 2,700, 3,000 shares, we did an ad in it because I love the trade, it dropped. This was a big position, but the total profit in this position was $29,100. It was a fabulous trade. Why was it such a big trade? Two reasons, one size, two, I was very exact in the entry and I got it, and three, it had a big move. The stock dropped from above 365, broke 360. So it dropped really more than $5, okay? That is a big move, even for the QQQs, even at this price point. 
You could have taken 100 shares of this with a small account. You still would have had a huge strain. Why? Because looking at your risk and looking at the move, again, it moved more than five bucks. So if you had 100 shares, you would have made over $500. If you had 1,000 shares, you would have made over $1,000, okay? Any questions here? You could have done an option in this if you didn't want to trade this on margin. We did. I don't have that in here. But there's so many different ways to trade if you understand the direction something's going to go or where it's going. Anyways, you can do this for a career. You can do it for extra money coming in. It's totally, totally up to you. The point is to learn it. You learn it and you do it. Okay? That is the most important thing. You learn it and you do it. And if you understand something, it will help you take more risk. How am I able to take an advanced risk in a trade? Particularly something if I'm getting in and out really quickly or fast, or even if I'm holding something overnight, like an option, because I believe in it. I understand it. I've been doing this for a long time, okay? Understanding it helps you take the right, correct risk or even hold a trade. And that goes to for whether you have a small account or a big account, quite frankly. So let's go over another one we did here that was really good. FDX, closed here, gap down, fell. This is on the 22nd of September. We did a short in this, we did a put in this, and we did a day trade in it. The put was the 230 puts that I called in September 22nd, it worked. And if, uh, we did a beginner risk and an advanced risk here. So you could see, again, if you want to risk $1,000 in a trade, you could have made $13.65, 126% return on investment. Again, if you can risk $1,080, you could have taken one contract for $360 and still made over 100% of your profit. This was, I'm going to go back to the day chart, the 230s. So here's the day I called the trade, again, in the pre-market, in the morning, dropped, fell, boom. Boom, boom, boom. This fell today as well. So again, this is a beginner risk, okay? Advanced trader risk, if you took 20 contracts, risk 7,200, sold at 815, profit 9,100, return on investment 126%, okay? Any questions? So options are something, if you don't know how to do them, that's fine. You don't have to do them. You just want to day trade, that's fine. You can be in the room and day trade and learn the system. If you don't like day trading, don't want to trade on margin, you want to open up a cash account, you can open up a cash account at a broker to trade options with as little as $2,000. It depends how it works for you, how the system works for you, okay? Any questions? All right, let's go over the day trade in FDX. Entry was 232.35. This was the same day, the same day, September 22nd. You could have done it as a day trade and an option, both one, whichever. 1,000 shares was a risk of 29.50. We added in this one too because I loved it. Exit 225.55, $4,400, a beautiful trade. So you could have done this both, which we did, okay? Done the day trade, done the option, boom. This rated as a good gap to drop. A put is a short in an option. And a short is just a short where you're basically betting the stock price is going to drop. And we short it, okay? And that's, again, what I'm teaching people how to do in the class. It, I'm so good at shorting. I don't know why so many day traders are anti-shorting. People prefer to go long. They're getting killed, killed in this market in the last week. I will tell you that right now. People that cannot get off on what's happening here in this market uh, do not understand it but i will find that in teaching people now for as many years as i have people do prefer to veer to the long side i don't know why but they just do any questions all right so one pick is all you need every single day again today we did facebook i have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow i won't know until i get up and there's nothing for me to worry about tonight. Every day we do something different. I never know. The strategy is always the gap strategy. That is always what I do. I'm always focused on that. It is a very specialized strategy. And if you want to make money in the market, you need to think and act like a true professional. You can't be all over the place. You can't go long and short the same stock the same day. 
this is true even if you're doing it on the side. If you just want to make money on the side, like I said, as an extra side job or career, you still have to take it seriously. You still have to learn it, take a class, open an account. Just because you're only doing something maybe five hours a week or something doesn't mean you can't take it seriously. And you could end up making more money doing this in your regular job. You have to take it seriously. Professionals have specialized strategies, systems, and reasons for taking trades. And you need to take it seriously. I don't know why people don't. To this day, I, I don't understand why people think they can watch a free video on YouTube and learn how to trade. And they will take a stranger, as a complete and total stranger's trade on Reddit, on that Reddit trading forum, people that they don't even know or they're chatting with. They have no clue who they are or why they're doing things. They will take a trade and they will take and risk their own money in trades from strangers that they earned their own hard earned money and people would do it. And I do not understand that at all. You must think like an intelligent, normal, professional person, okay? It doesn't matter if you're trading at home in your basement, you still have to act like you're on Wall Street wearing a suit, at least if you wanna be successful, okay? It is in your head, it is the decisions that you make. You gotta make good decisions. I make good decisions. I make good decisions with my money. I wouldn't be here if I didn't, okay? The fact is when I started out trading, I lost. I didn't start making money immediately. It took me three years to figure the strategy out. I did not know what I was doing. Luckily, I made good decisions with my money that I could continue to trade because I did trade with my own live money. I worked full time and taught myself how to trade at the same time. It was a very grueling process and a difficult three years of my life, but I did it. I did it. And you know, I made good decisions about my money during that time. You can't blow up your account. If you have $5,000 in your account, you can't risk it on one trade. You can't do dumb stuff. And people do all the time. I just don't understand why. And I'm saying this as someone that has been teaching people now for 10 years. You've got to focus on one strategy. You have to be effective and efficient. Gaps are efficient because they have big moves and they work quick. And when we get stopped out, we're out quick. If we had gotten stopped on Facebook, I would have known right away in five minutes. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. We were up in five minutes instead. But, you know, again, I'm not wasting my whole day if something doesn't go to work. So in order to be successful trading, you will have to be consistent. You can't lose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, make money on, I mean, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then make money on a Friday and expect to get somewhere with it. You've got to be green in most of your trains, most of the days. Okay? Consistency counts. So how are you going to find and pick which gaps to trade? You're going to rate them using a system. This is what you'd come and you'd learn from me. That's what I do. And people always say, well, where do you find gaps? They're everywhere. There's plenty of things to rate. So that's not the point. It's that many things are not good. So you can make a list of 500 gaps in the morning if you want. A lot of them are going to be crap. So I tend to narrow it down <coughs> Excuse me, to just a couple things that I look at and rate each day. And I try to narrow it down to do just one. But my system is called the Golden Gap. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. That is the meat and potatoes. That's how you're gonna do it. And again, if you're new, that's the benefit of being in the room. I'm telling you, Facebook is good. Facebook is a short. This is the target, boom. And you follow along, okay? I'm calling the trades live in the room. And if I'm sending out a newsletter like the options newsletter, you take the trade after the open when I send the trade out, okay? Until you learn it, until you get it down pat. So the Golden Gap system teaches you how to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of direction of bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves on the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, okay? So the philosophy behind the Golden Gap system, it means to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the direction of bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, okay? To make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame. That's important too, which is what? The one minute chart. This is a high degree of focus and accuracy. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction. Using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trains with accuracy. Okay. So I get this question again, how many trades? 
During earnings season, we will get three to five trades a day, more. Depends how many trades you wanna do. And in non-earning season, you'll get three to five a week. So right now, it's not earning season. We had a busy day today, but to be honest with you, this week is probably gonna be slow compared to two weeks from now when earning season starts, we'll be even busier. So it's plenty of trades, plenty of gaps and plenty of trades and plenty of things to keep you active. But I follow the system. If I rate the gaps in the morning and there's nothing good, we don't trade, we don't do anything. And if I rate them and we get three, we can do them all. It doesn't mean I'm doing them all. I might call them in the room, but I like to focus on one for the day trade. However, I will do multiple options because that's less for me to focus on because I can let them run out because I can stay in an option a little bit longer. I don't have to get out of an option by four. I have to get out of the day trade fast because the market closes at four, okay? So the 26 point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. That is the purpose of coming to me. That is the main reason to come to me, to learn my system, to do the class, so you can do it yourself. And as long as I'm running the business, I'll be able to call the trades in the room and on the letter. But if you learn it, you're going to be able to do it yourself without me. And it works. Now, like I said, I've had the business for a while. And if people have come, they've come, they've left, they've come back. I've had people that have stayed. You know, it's really up to you. But the support system I offer is just hand down the best because I will answer people's questions individually and help them. And a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> it's not that I'm not busy. I am. I want people to get it. Okay. Any questions here so far? I feel like I need some water. I don't have any next to me. Anyways, the system pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility to trade. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be doing on a chart in order to for the stock to make the correct direction. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals, which you want you want to reach. And the problem with the period we're in now, right now, of inflation is people are behind. They're behind. And that's the problem. If people are paying more for things and they have less money in their bank account, and, and again, that wears on people emotionally, besides financially. People don't like to feel that they're behind in anything. A checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists. Like if you were a pilot, you would have a checklist. Any questions? So let's talk about the 26 points. Why do they work? The point rating system works because it is such a detailed analysis of the price action. <laughs> it also works because everything that is being looked at in each point uses a daily chart of the stock. The daily chart of a stock is the most powerful and real indication as to the trend in a stock for any trader of any kind. And the price reading on the char daily chart tells you everything you need to know about who is controlling the stock and in what direction. You must get the direction right on the daily chart if you want to make money trading. That is very, very important. I said that earlier. Like you wouldn't have made money today if you went long at any point in time today. If you went long the market or Facebook, you would have lost. It would have been impossible to make money. And it would have been impossible to lose money if you followed the trades that I called today, which were all shorts. But we try to get in as early as possible. I think that's important. Why? Because then you can decide where you want to get out. You can hold it if you want to. You can get out of half if you want to. You can do whatever you want to do, okay? What is it about gaps that makes them so profitable? Big moves, momentum, all of those things are very important. Today was a, a clear indication of that. So again, why do gaps move so big? Because they are moved by large institutional money. Not every gap, but the gaps that I do are. So again, I'm not playing every single gap. In fact, there's less good gaps than there is bad gaps. So I'm trying to find the few that are good, but the few that are good are made with what? Large institutional money. That's what makes them move. They're not made by retail traders. Again, retail traders, for the most part, do not move stocks in the market. GME is a phenomenon, something odd and rare and not normal. And that only happened on like two days in that stock. As of now, the stock has been tanking and people are long it thinking it's gonna go back up again, and it's not, okay? That was an anomaly. In general, I'm looking for the good gaps, 
what I call golden gaps, and gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation. That's what I'm looking for in the rating, the confirmation and the conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. You saw that today in the market. What, what did you have today? You had selling. Okay, you had big selling today. Facebook's a good example of that again. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. That's an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to train because you're trading on the side of power money, which is again, how it makes it easier for you to make money because you're never gonna move Facebook. You're never gonna move the market. You're not gonna move Amazon either. You can't, that would be impossible. You could throw your whole account in it, you're not gonna move it, all right? You've got to go with the big money and you will allow that to move your position. Okay. Any questions? So let's talk about trading with size. The only difference between a beginner trader, intermediate trader, and an advanced trader is size. A trader cannot risk more money per trade and take size until they know how to accurately trade over a period of months. However, trading with size is the goal. Okay, one play with size can make your whole week. Two or three great plays a month can make your whole month. And months when you get lots of huge plays to dream targets, that's fabulous. We're in that period right now. Things are really working very well, okay? And it's just like, you know, spread and butter on a bagel, you know? You gotta take advantage of the good times. I'm not saying that we continue to sell off. We might be going long tomorrow. I don't know. Again, I am not predicting the gap. I get up in the morning, I rate the gap, and then I make the determination. But I will say that I do think this fall trading people uh, period will be volatile. You have to choose your risk based on the size of your account. But the more you risk, the more you can make. Obviously, if you short something with 5,000 shares and it drops a dollar, you can make what? Five grand. So as far as how much you want to make and the money you want to make per day, you have to look at the size of your account to make the determination. But the idea is to grow it, to, to, to step it up over time to do well, okay? Any questions? Okay, quiet group tonight. Or you're mesmerized by everything I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the brain, fast trading and the brain. So my brain works very fast. That's a good thing if you're following me because we get the trades quick, okay? Got to get used to it. You'll learn it. You know what we're looking for. You'll do it. When you're in a mode where you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, your brain will work fast too. You train it to work fast. That's what you've got to do. Because in trading, you've got to make split second decisions sometimes quickly. That could be in or out. That could be getting out of the trade with money, okay? Lots of traders do not understand how their brain works and then train their brain actually to make bad decisions, poor decisions, poor judgment. We were talking about that earlier, okay? Ultimately, if you want to do this, it could be a side gig for you to make extra money. You don't have to do it full time. You could trade one day a week in the room. Whatever extra money you can make my, right now will help you. There's no nothing bad about trading whatsoever at all. If you can do it and be successful and make money, it would be a positive thing to your life, okay? The problem is I think for many people that have been trying to go at this for years and years and failing is that they end up having a negative attitude about trading or the market or don't believe they will ever be successful. But that's simply not true. There are people out there that make money from the market. The problem is that many people don't know what they're doing. And if you're losing, you don't know what you're doing. Just admit to yourself that you don't know what you're doing. Admit that you have to come to someone like me and pay me for my knowledge because you don't have it. And again, it took me three years to figure this out. It was not easy. And many people would not have taken that amount of time that I did invested in it. But I'm the type of personality that I never give up on anything, never. I will stick to it until we get it. I'm like that with trades. I'm like that with trades, quite frankly. We were shorting Facebook and shorting it, shorting it, shorting it, shorting it, shorting it until we got the drop. So, you know, I will just lean into something until I get it and get what I want and never give up. 
A lot of people don't have the personality, but again, that's what makes it a benefit thing to come and trade with me. I like to win, I wanna be successful. You wanna align yourself with successful people and people that want to be successful, that is important. But if you feel like you're a slave to your job, whatever the hours are giving you, they're not getting a raise or, or whatever the case may be, you're not a slave. You're not. That mindset is not getting you anywhere. Okay. So don't make people let you feel like that. Your own self-worth has to do with you. You are an intelligent person. You can get this. You have to learn what to do. Anybody can learn what to do. It's knowing what it is and understanding it. This isn't brain surgery. Again, I teach the class on a weekend. While you may not know 100% of everything after the weekend on the Sunday at 5 o'clock, you're going to know a heck of a lot more by Monday morning than you did on Friday. And then you ask questions, okay? <coughs> you have to take charge of your own finances and you have to take charge of your own life. And that is just the reality. There's no point in whining about it or complaining about it again. No point in whining about inflation or cost of goods, things, things going up. There's no point. I've been in New York for the last 19 months. It has been the worst time probably to ever live in New York City. I'm still here. Whether I stay or not, I don't know. But the fact is I'm still here and it has been a terrible time to live in this town. There's no point complaining about it. I can leave tomorrow if I want. I don't know what I'm gonna do. There's things that happen in life that you can't change, but luckily we're all independent people. You can make your own decision. There's no point in complaining about inflation. There's no point in complaining if you paid for classes and didn't get anything out of it. What's the point of complaining? There's no point in complaining if you lost money in the market. What's the point? Move forward. Take today as the first day and tomorrow is the first day that you're going to move forward and have a positive attitude, learn something different and change it and turn it around. You, you can move forward in your life and in your training if you just look ahead instead of looking back. I find that a lot of traders are stuck in the past and they're constantly second guessing themselves and looking back. Okay, they allow the negative things that happen in their life to affect them going forward. You're just working against yourself if you're doing that. The only solution if things cost more is to earn more. That's it. Again, we talked about that earlier. These are the choices, or you do without. And I find that even people that say they'll do without, they're really not okay with it. They say that they are, but they're really not. So to me, that really isn't even an option. <coughs> Any questions here? So the class is called the Golden Gap Course that I teach. The class is this weekend for October. It is October 9th and 10th. It is a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. The checklist is invaluable. It tells you what to trade and look for every day. That is how I make the picks. We're trading momentum. Today there was selling momentum. Tomorrow we may have buying momentum. It's the idea of the explosive move, the big move. It happens in gaps. And again, it, if you think about it, it makes sense. This is how you can make a lot of money because you're getting the big moves. That's how the risk to reward payouts are so high. That's how you're getting 100 some percent, 300 some percent in the return on investment trades. That's how, because of the momentum, okay? And the volume in these stocks too. And then again, whether you get out quick or you hold something that is totally, totally, totally up to you, depending on your schedule and how much time that you have to trade. But do not waste time trading in the market if you're losing money with doing a strategy right now that isn't working. It's just silly. It doesn't make any sense. It's like standing at a slot machine at a casino and continuing to play it, hoping that you're gonna that you're gonna win and keep throwing money into the machine. Okay. Don't waste years and months of your life doing something that's not working or that you don't have any convic conviction in anymore. You have to have conviction. And again, that's something that I teach in the class. It's conviction in the information. And then you get that conviction once you start to do it in green. It's amazing how people start to make money with me and then all of a sudden it changes their whole mindset in the market if they've had a negative mindset before. But they've got to get to the point to talk themselves into doing the class. I mean, I had a guy that signed up for the class over the weekend. I, I don't know how long he's been following me. I think most of this year, 2021. And then I called all the trades today that he got. And then, I mean, he knew. He knew then that he made a great decision to sign up. And I he ended up calling me. We talked on the phone. You know, obviously he was happy immediately that he finally decided to do it. It took him months. Took him, took him months and months and months. He's been following me almost the whole year. It took him that long to decide to do it. And in one day, all of these trades worked and he saw the system working then. And he hasn't even done the class yet. He, he paid, 
He's doing the class this weekend. But he'll understand it better once he does it. Any questions here? I'm almost done, Kathy. Thanks for letting me stay. I know it's a little bit after 5.30. Anyways, when you have conviction in a trading strategy, you can produce positive results. And when you do not have conviction in a trading strategy, do not expect positive results. This Facebook worked. We've been shorting it for weeks. I knew that it would drop. I really was looking at that 350 area, which it broke the other week, and then 330, which it obviously broke today. And again, who knows where this goes? But people are making money with me. I received a lot of nice emails today. Obviously, people did the trades. They're happy. You know, you can turn your year around even in three months. That sounds crazy, but if you've been losing money trading all year, you can turn it around in three months the way that I've been calling trades. It's about the opportunity. It's about the knowledge. It's about taking quality trades. Again, making good decisions. That's so important. So if you decide you want to sign up for the Golden Gap course, it will teach you how to make money in the market. It will teach you how to get conviction in the market's ability to pay you. That's what, why you're doing this, okay? It will teach you the correct way to trade gaps. Many people don't understand gaps or do them incorrectly. It will teach you a consistent strategy to use for swing option and day trading, okay? So empower yourself today. Trading is an individual job. It's something you can do by yourself, but it definitely helps to have a mentor, somebody you can call and ask questions to, somebody you can email. What do you think about this one, that one, the target, whatever? It's helpful. And I try to go over the market every day in the room, even in days we don't trade the market. So the Golden Gap course is a complete system to use to trade. All the pieces of the puzzle together for you to understand it and do it. So it is a full two-day course in how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at a professional bearish gaps. You will learn how to short gaps. Class is online. And it's this weekend. Okay? So the class tuition is $69.99, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. A class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. If you want to sign up, you must email me. You cannot sign up on the website. You email me for the forms, and you fill them out and send them back to me. I am doing an earnings season special for this week, a fall sale, which is a great deal because you can trade then all earnings season, get all the trades for the options letter and the room to the end of this year. With the normal class price, there's normally a subscription price for the newsletter and the trading room. Deadline for that is Friday, October 8th. Any questions from anyone? This, I put this in here. If you had done my class last year, the, the price of the class was the same. I have not, talking about inflation, I have not raised the price of the class. But everyone that paid for the class in 2020, the same class would cost, really, and look at inflation, 5.7% higher, almost $7,400. So I'm sure the people that paid for the class in 2019 and 2020 were glad that they paid for it last year. Don't wait if you want to sign up. Don't wait. Again, things are costing more. I have no plans at this moment to raise the price of the class, but who knows? At this rate, your dollar, the value of your dollar is decreasing because of inflation. I talked about that on Friday on Fox News. That is not good for any of us, particularly if you have your money in a savings account where you're earning 0.0001%. You've got to get ahead of the game. How do you do that? By earning more. Way more than $400, way more than 0 0.001 interest, way more. So don't wait if you're interested. And you can get somewhere with your trading. If you want to trial for the run this week, email me. Melissa at the stockswish.com. Any questions from anyone at all? Thanks for letting me stay a little bit later, Kathy. Angelo, I don't know whatever happened to you. I'll email you later. You were going to do the class in December of 2020. That was almost a year ago, and you never did. I don't know why. I remember talking to you. Mario, I don't know if we ever spoke. Ronnie, I've seen you, I think, at other webinars. If you want to trial to the room, email me. Again, you have to get the password. It's through Hotcom, though. Okay, very good. Have a wonderful day, everyone, or wonderful evening. You're welcome.